My name is Michael McCarthy, and I'm a Vietnam veteran. I was in the Marine Corps from 1968 to 1971. I enjoyed myself in the Marine Corps. I want to tell you that. I, that was one of probably the best times in my life. I was discharged from the Marine Corps. I came out. I, uh, I went to work. I worked for Raytheon for a while, and then I just kind of bombed around doing little odds and ends jobs. I got married. I have a daughter, Erin. They took everything from me. They, they took my, they took things out of the house. They took the bank accounts. They took, took my vehicle. Uh, no vehicle, no job, no job. I couldn't keep the house. I lost the house. I lost everything. A lot of self-pity went to that. And I started drinking. I will not lie to you, I did drink before, but nothing like I drank like that. It was constantly drinking. The Prussians sent in, and that's the funny thing about the Prussian because I was the one at one time on the police department that would have to look around and, and watch for the Prussian, watch for the, the mood swings, watch how these men are acting after certain things happened. I couldn't see the depression in myself. I thought I was fine, I thought I was doing okay. Somewhere along the line, I. I crossed the line. I crossed the line from drinking to being an alcoholic. That's all that consumed me. I couldn't take care of myself. I couldn't take care of my life. Problems that I could take care of, I didn't. Problems I had no control over, I tried the hardest to solve, and my life went right down the tubes. I, I ran through family. I ran through friends. I had no one left. I think that was a, a great idea. I've, I've known homeless centers before. I never liked what I saw there. Didn't like the client. Oh, that's, and I'm trying to reconcile the fact that this is what I would finally had come to. This is what my life had finally come to. This was it. This was the bottom. A homeless shelter. This is, this is not me. I was, I was a somebody one time. I was, I was a somebody. This is my, probably my best buddy in the whole world. I've had Clyde for about 10 years. I was sick, and my daughter Erin uh, brought me Clyde. She figures I needed some company to, to cheer me up. And I took a little liking to him, and he's been everywhere with me. And uh, I want to tell you, Clyde actually, at one point not too long ago, a couple of years ago, saved my life. He, he truly did. Uh, I've grown very fond of Clyde. When you're living alone, you need someone to talk to, and I'm always talking to him. And this is gonna be kind of hard to tell you this in here, but I had taken a trip around the country. I think it was my last hurrah, and I took Clyde with me. I, I was depressed, despondent. I was not gonna come back. That was my, my thing, not to come back. 
find somewhere and just kind of lay down and, and die and just do it. I was tired of my life. I was tired of the way I was living, tired of what happened to me. But we went everywhere. We went Washington, New York, Miami, Texas, all just all over the country. And I couldn't do it because I couldn't leave Clyde. What would become of Clyde? What would they do with him? Would they throw him in a dumpster? Would they just leave him on the side of the road somewhere? Would they? I, I couldn't do that to the poor guy. He, he was really, he's kind of my buddy. And I know it's odd that a 58-year-old man would have a stuffed raccoon as a friend, but we all needed someone. They may laugh at me, they may make jokes, but Clyde saved my life, and that's, I'm gonna have to keep him. And as she was growing up, you know, I always tell her that no matter what happens to you, come to me, that we can fix this problem, we can take care of it. There may be consequences, but we can take care of it. Do not handle this load alone. Now, she doesn't really know that I'm here. She knows I'm in Boston, she knows I'm safe, she knows I'm not drinking, and that makes her very happy. But I cannot tell her exactly where I am. I cannot tell her that I'm in a center, and I'm in a homeless center, because Erin would be here in a heartbeat, saying, come on, Dad, pack your stuff up, we're out of here, we can fix this. Well, we can't fix this. I have to fix it. I feel as if I become somewhat of a better person. I have a job now. I work there at the center. But from the person I was, I look back on it now. It's funny how you can look back at your actions or things you were doing and say to yourself now, what the hell was I thinking? What was I doing? This is not you. Well, I know for the most part, that was the alcohol that was doing it. And that was what you lived for. Well, I'm not drinking now. I haven't drank for quite some time. So I can't use that as an excuse. I'm, I'm responsible for my own actions now. Clyde's gonna outlive me. Oh yes, Clyde's going nowhere. He, he's looking forward to leaving too. He hates living in that wall locker back there. It's dark all day. Now he's always complaining. No, he's, he's going with me. He's, he's in for the long haul. We're, we're buds. We're going, right bud? Okay. okay.